Brian. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I believe he'll be back tomorrow. I hope you all are having a good day. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. Let me scroll up to the top here. We have uh, off about 0.69%. The E-mini up about, well, we're sideways right now in the Russell. Uh, the NQs off uh, pretty deeply, 1.43%. Same with the composite. And the Dow futures just up slightly at 0.26%. Gold contract up about a full percent point right now at 2,449. Silver at 2,845, up about 2.11 percent. And then copper uh, right there at 409. Crude oil continues to go down. I want to bring up a little article um, to talk about why that might be happening, especially at a time when you're having increasing tensions in the Middle East. I think uh, the IDF just launched a missile into Beirut to hit a uh, Hezbollah target, uh, which is usually kind of a bearish, or excuse me, bullish thing for oil, but it's not uh, seeming to affect the market uh, too deeply. Uh, before I go any further, you know, we have a great lineup today. Of course, we have Basil Chapman in the second segment, and then Tim Ord uh, from there on out. Uh, one of the things I want to bring to your guys' attention is we extended this out, uh, this Tiger dollar sale we have. Again, huge bonuses, 20, 30, even 40% bonuses. That's going to end August 1st. Okay, so get in there, and uh, we have Basil coming on. Talk a little bit about his opening call newsletter. Of course, he just had his webinar, uh, which I am getting up. I'm looking at the, for the people who have been emailing me. I am looking at it rendering right now. We just had uh, some tech issues. Uh, the computer that had the problem has been reprimanded, and we will not experience that again. Uh, let's take a look. Of course, you have Microsoft after the earning, or excuse me, after the bells. Microsoft earnings after the bell. Uh, off about 1.49%. Of course, you had issues uh, going on last week with CrowdStrike, although that wasn't necessarily Microsoft's fault. But today, they are having outages uh, with Azure Team and Microsoft 365. I think Teams was just recently added to that. And uh, from what I'm seeing, there's not too much commentary on it right now. Uh, but essentially, they had a usage spike in this weighed down server, the servers, and uh, supposedly that's what. Uh, resulting in these outages, you know, stick around and read when this comes out what the main cause was because it could be kind of significant if for some reason they had an unforeseen, you know, you should spike and they weren't able uh, to balance that out. Uh, kind of kind of crazy. Um, but as it stands now, you're down 1.52%. Of course, other big news after the bell today is going to be AMD. They're coming out now. AMD has been getting killed uh, since around March, you had a high of 227.30. And while everything else in the chip sector has been steadily going up, you've had uh, really an on average just to the downside, right? You had this small spike around in July, uh, but we're reaching very low even to uh, yearly lows on this. And essentially, they're looking for uh, continued growth, um, at least in their data centers and, 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 and purchasing of their chips. Remains to be seen how that works out. Uh, you know, I'm looking at some of these other, obviously you can see that the NQ is down right now, right? I'll take a look at NVIDIA as well. That's off 6% right now. Now, the cycle happens that right before earnings, you get a relatively, you know, sizable sell-off, but, you know, this is pretty strong, right? This is 6% to the downside today, trading at 104.90. It looks like it really wants to get back, you know, to that gap up, right, around that $95 mark. And this is not, you know, insignificant volume to the downside. So it looks like we might be testing that breakout level. Uh, in NVIDIA, of course, these companies are around to stay, but um, you know, I, I wonder if some of these larger analysts are expecting maybe you know, some, some bad projections for at least the next uh, month, or excuse me, the next quarter. It remains to be seen what happens with that. Uh, let's see, we have Sophie as well, SoFi. That horrible SPAC that came out a few years ago, uh, trading up about 0.48%, 736. Uh, they had a profitable quarter. They, their EPS was 0.01. Uh, that beat the estimates of uh, just zero. So there you go. Raised 2024 guidance. Let's see here. They're, they reported net revenue of $599 million and net income of $17 million. For Q2 2024, marking the third consecutive quarter of gap profitability, uh, recorded it just as, yeah, let's see here. The net revenue is driven by 46% combined growth in financial services and tech platform segments. Yeah. I mean, I think that this stock, 
gets a lot of attention because a lot of people, let's see, I don't want that month. I guess I can't go any further. Bought it really around here, you know, probably even further back than it, right? Yeah, this 28, 26, this is when it kind of hit IPO. This is a SPAC, of course. I think Chamath pushed this and a lot of people just got into it and they're still holding it because they thought it was gonna be a major winner and it, it has taken a long time for them, you know, to be super profitable. They've done a lot of cool acquisitions like Galileo in the past, but it just hasn't been uh, coming to fruition and that's giving you a uh, price of 736 on it and a seven billion dollar market cap as well. I don't know, that's, that's a weird one. Again, these things stay like meme stocks because people just don't get out of them in time before they're, they're dumped. And uh, you know, then we continue to go on. <laughs> it's like crazy to me. We'll talk a little bit about AI. You know, one of the big things with Microsoft is that people are gonna be like, you know, AMD to some extent, but really Microsoft. The next few quarters are gonna have analysts looking at profitability arising from the major investments uh, in AI, which is actually, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's why we're adding, you know, AI to all these kind of uh, companies. And it's gonna be hard to say when these actually become profitable. You have JP Morgan, now this is kind of in interesting. I'm not sure really how much they've invested in it because they're just using chat GPT, but these ideas of how these larger companies uh, can actually start generating a profit with it. Of course, you have Meta uh, using certain things for, uh, I believe like a uh, video creation. Let me see here. Yeah, AI studio in the US for creators to build AI chatbots. That's interesting in and of itself. I think that's using Llama 2, which uh, was reviewed this weekend and everyone said it beat ChatGPT uh, 4.0, but I, I think the jury is still kind of out on that. We have JP Morgan coming in, the rolling out a generative artificial intelligence product, telling employees that it's its own version of OpenAI's ChatGPT that can do the work of a research analyst. Pretty crazy. You're still gonna have to have someone there to look at it, but you know, this is where the future is, right? They can make a lot of money rolling this out. Folks, uh, stay right there. We're gonna be joined by Basil Chapman in the next segment.